guys, welcome back to another Gimpy's Gal Guesses. I am here at the World Board Gaming Championships in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure the name of the town. I think I saw Champion, but I could be completely wrong. But I'm at Seven Springs Resort. We've been here all week. Today is Saturday, and I am sitting down to film an unboxing. I'm actually here with Lock and Load. There's so many different things going on here. I have learned a lot. I got to see behind the curtain and see some games that aren't even out yet or ready yet. I got to kind of play a few. It has been very fun and exciting. And so I'm very excited to be doing this unboxing here live from the championship. So this one is a lock and load game um, by Lock and Load Publishing. This is kind of the reason why we're here. Lock and Load kind of gave Gimpy um, his, his break and was so wonderful to get us here and we are so grateful and we obviously love lock and load so i am doing bloody mohawk the french and indian war so i don't remember what number this is for gimpy's gal guesses but let's just jump into it so right away it is a picture on the front of this box i'm not sure if this is from a movie or if it was like posed or staged for the game but i like that it's a picture and it isn't just like a painting i've said that before i really 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 love that um and it's it says the french and indian war so we have some native american indian type things um and that's what this looks like on the front of here they're kind of scary a little intimidating but also kind of badass too so i like it um so that is the front of the box here and then back of the box we have Kind of little information about it um, says the French and Indian War. Bill Malino, this who designed on the French Indian War, also known as the Seven Years War. I have heard of that. So the Bloody Mohawk thing, I'm not sure what that reference is for, but I've heard of the Seven Years War before. The English and the French had battled for ownership of North America for years. Blah blah blah. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of history, like some other games we've seen in the past do. So that's pretty cool. And then it kind of shows you an example um, of you know some pieces that are in here. So on the back, because I have done some lock and load games before, and a lot of games I do have this on the back where it tells you kind of how complex the game is. So on this one, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On a scale of one to ten, the complexity looks like it's right in the middle at a five. Um, solitaire playability is at a seven, so that's a pretty good compatibility there for solitaire. It is for ages 12 and up, one to two players, and takes two to four hours. Um, it has 12 did I read that right? 12 maps. That's a lot of maps. But only one player A card. One manual, one counter sheet, and one D10 die. Um, and this is what the back of the box looks like. So let's open her on up here. And let's just jump into this. So we have the die right here, a D10. Right here. Here is the manual. It says manual... Um, Bloody Mohawk, French and Indian War. So again, it's the same front and back that's on the box. Let's just kind of peruse this to see. Obviously we have our table of contents, love, um, and again has that same kind of uh, picture on this, which I really like. And then there's another picture of a gentleman on the back. I'm not sure um, exactly who that is, but he is definitely not as scary as the, the ones on the front. So um, I like this side. Um, probably better for my children whereas this side is is pretty badass but i like it though anyways when we open it up we have table of contents rules um we have a sequence of play um it's kind of telling you about the counters and and you know what each thing on the counter stands for and then it looks like here we have different um two three four five six different hexagons with different kind of land situations on it um, and so it's kind of telling what each of those is and then we have the sequence of play um, so yeah it's just kind of telling you that like I said I don't usually read through all of this so I'm not sure what all of that is has different battle names in here um, but that is the player or the manual um, it's not very thick it is 23 pages long which is my kind of manual um, and it looks like a pretty simple to grasp like it wouldn't take forever to read even if you're like me and you don't like reading this kind of stuff I think I could read it because it's just not too overwhelming so that is the manual then we have one counter sheet 
Um, so on the counters we have, obviously we have two sides because it says it's the French and the British, or the French and the Indian. So I think the top must be French because down here I see Indian. So these on the top I believe are the French. Up here he'll overlay the, the counters so you can see them better. Um, and then at the bottom we have Indian. Um, and then we have some special cars that have a question mark on them. The turn with a time, what is that thing called? Oh, what is that called? I can't think of it. The little time thing that you flip when you're playing games that has the sand. Whatever that's called, I can't think of it for some reason. But that um, is here. And then we have some, some headstones say RIP. There are some, uh, like this one says leader. This one says Milus or Milis Indian line. So I don't know if that is maybe their position on their side. Um, but that, those are the counters. We only have one sheet of counters, so not a lot in the counters department. But again, I like that because it, it means that it's not too many pieces. Like it's not too much. It's not making me feel overwhelmed. It makes me feel like, okay, this is simple. This is easy. This is doable. I can do this. So then we have one player aid. Again, love it when there's only one because it means there's not too much to memorize. So, okay, terrain, that's the word I couldn't think of earlier. So we have all the terrains listed. We have movement cost, combat, retreat, up here at the top of the player card right here, at the player A card, and then right here is the turn track. So obviously we know there are 10 turns, and that little hourglass, that's what it's called, is I'm assuming what you place on the turn track to keep track of turns. So this just gives you, again, movement cost, combat information, and retreat information as it pertains to which terrain you are on. So I think I'm getting this like pretty good so far. All right, but I think the rest of this is the map. So there was 12 maps. So let's take a look at these. So right away, when I look at this first one, it says Bloody Mohawk, the French and Indian War. This is a little teeny baby map. Um, and it says Battle of Sidling Hill, and it has a date, April 1st, 1756. I feel like that's probably a, a like historically accurate thing that happened, and this is an actual location, but I don't know how we choose because all of these maps, let's see, yeah, all of these maps are vastly different, um, and they all have different battle names and different dates on them, so I don't know if you play them like in chronological order, or if you like roll the dice and that determines, or if you have one and someone else has one. I'm not sure how the maps come into play, but they're all different and they all have different dates and different battle names on them. So I don't know. I, I, I didn't see when I was flipping through how you determine what you're playing on or where you're playing. Um, but let's just look because a lot of times I miss these things. So let's look. Let's see, we've got Jumanville Glen, Jumanville Glen. Okay, so that's that. Well, these look like they could be scenarios, possibly, because um, they have dates, and then it's telling you like how to set up what the first player does, what the second player does, special rules, and it looks like they are all different. So maybe you can, maybe you play each of these in order, or maybe you just play one at a time, you choose which one you want to play. I'm assuming maybe the smaller maps are, are a quicker gameplay than the bigger maps, um, but I'm not 100% on that. So I don't know if you put all of these out together, like a puzzle, um, and that's how you play on the map, or if you just flip through and pick one, if you just turn them over and randomly choose one, and that's how you decide, I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of games do it all different ways, so that one I'm not 100% clear on. But I'm gonna give my guess based on what I've seen. Um, to keep this quick, the kids are out on the balcony with Gimpy. We're, we were on our way to dinner and I wanted to stop in and do this really quickly. So my guess for Bloody Mohawk is kind of like um, a battle or combat war, like chess or checkers it looks like because there's these little pieces and we saw movement points on the player aid card or movement cost, combat, and retreat. So maybe it's like you're, you're, you start on one side and the enemy starts on the other side. If I look at this map, there's um, some letters on some of these hexagons here. If you can see like up here says R, this says F, and then we have another F and then BBB. So I don't know what that stands for. I'm assuming the F is for French, but I don't know what the B or the R would be for. So maybe that tells you 
This says exit at the top, so obviously that's how you get out. Maybe that's how you win on this one. But then, for example, this one doesn't have that. So they're so different. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how it is, but obviously we know it is about a war, so it's a combat game. There is a dice that somehow comes into play, um, and there's 12 different maps that you either play all at once, or you choose one at random, or you just do what you want with it. I'm really not sure, but that's the whole point of this, is that I don't know what I'm talking about. So um, that is my guess for Bloody Mohawk. It is a combat game. There's two sides. It said one to two players. It can be played solitaire, which is awesome. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, I don't know if there might be maps that are, maybe that's why there's so many maps. Maybe some of the maps are just for solitaire play and some are for multiplayer. I'm not 100%. I didn't see that sticking out to me in the manual. But again, if I read the whole thing, I'd probably know. <laughs> but that defeats the whole purpose. So Anyways, um, this was Bloody Mohawk, The French and Indian War by Lock and Load Publishing. And I hope to have some kind of behind the scenes footage from Gimpy's Gals Week, Gimpy's Gals Week here at the Board Gaming Championships and share what we've been doing. The kids and I have been keeping busy. There's so much to do here. We have met so many incredible people. Um, my husband's going to insert a picture. Um, we tried to do this the other night and it just did not work, but I was wearing... Um, Mo from Mo's game table. I was wearing his hat um, and it actually was pretty comfortable and flattering. So I hate that I don't have it for this one, but I'll have him post the picture of me wearing it. We've met a lot of incredible people here and we have had so much fun and I cannot wait to come back again next year and hopefully meet even more of you guys. So definitely keep subscribing to Gimpy. Keep liking the videos and commenting. We love to see your feedback and I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! All right, Sissy's tired. Are you ready to go eat? You ready to go eat? Yeah. All right, say bye. Bye. Say lock and load. Lock and load. All right, go on. What's it say on this? It says lock and load. What's it say? It says lock and load. It says lock and load.